Well, we're beginning to worship. We're going to number 42. Jesus, you're my king. Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my days. I praise you all my days. You're perfect in all your ways. You're perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but thine be done. Glory, glory to the Lamb. You take me into the land. We will conquer in your name and proclaim that Jesus reigns. church. Good morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this time that you set aside for us to come together in fellowship to worship and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, man, I keep adding stuff up here. It's getting kind of crowded. <laughs> um, so uh, announcements. We did 972 families yesterday at the food bank. Uh, very busy day. How very many? busy. 972. <laughs> um, and we, tired, huh? and we are out of food. Um, so we will not be open on Monday. Um, we do have our annual congressional meeting um, this today after church. Um, we'll take about a 15-minute break, and then we'll go into our annual meeting. Um, we don't have a whole lot to go over, but we do have a couple things that we need to update, and um, also retention of elders uh, this year as well. So. And peach cobbler. And peach cobbler. <laughs> And I think, Bill, Bill, you brought some brownies, right? Gail. Thank you, Gail. Um, we did that just for you, Jim. We decided to do, do dessert just for you. <laughs> uh, we do have a Bible study here at the church on Wednesday night at uh, 7 o'clock. And we are still studying Kings, correct? First Kings. First Kings. Chapter 17. Chapter 17. So um, if you'd like to join us, come on down. Um, other announcements. Do you have any? I don't, I don't have any other announcements. I sort of have one. 
keep praying for the food bank. I'm not sure what's going to happen this year, but something big is coming our way. We just got approved by the state. We can't do anything until it actually hits their paperwork, and it's up on their website. But once it's up on their website, we just got approved, sort of like the schools. Like when you do your taxes, instead of paying the state 3500 bucks that you owe them, you can give a portion of that to us at the food bank, and it's dollar for dollar. So like if you owe... 1800 bucks. I'm not sure what the price is that you're allowed to give, and it's 800. You only owe a thousand bucks. 800 can go to us. And as soon as we get that paperwork, we're going to get it and we're going to put it out and publish it. So he's found a way to supply money to the food bank. So there's something big coming our way. And the one dream we always had that I want everybody to be praying up for is there's been a whole lot of times where somebody wanted to build a church and God didn't want it. Well, we wanted to build a church here for a long time. I'm not sure if there's enough room for a church and a food bank warehouse, but I want to build both. And when I build the warehouse, I want a church that can house as many people as God wants it to hold. But if we build a warehouse, I want a food bank, soup kitchen, clothes bank, showers, the whole ball of wax where we can help people in need, counseling, everything. And I think God is uh, opening up some doors for us, and we need to pray to make sure we walk through the doors that he opened for us, not the doors we want open for us. All right, I don't have anything else, so let's go on into intercessory prayer. But the one thing that I do want to say is when we talked the other month, we're only voting on two elders this week. That's me and Mike. And then we're going to do the other elders. We're going to put us on a rotation. We'll get that in the meeting. Yeah. Well, I got it out now. <laughs> You're not done yet. <laughs> well, I wanted these guys to think about it before we hit them all at once, and I got 10 minutes. All right, our cancer buddies. We need to be praying for these people. We've had some that have done really well. Uh, Fred Locke, Tristica, Wally, Bob Morrow, Joy Hutchinson, Joanne McDover, Noah, Robert Keshiker, Anne Maria. Jackie, Paul Vien, Candace Nalton, and Karen Salati. Now, Paul, I think he was supposed to go and get something done, but he's doing well. I talked to him the last few weeks, him and Paula. He and Tristica are both kind of on a maintenance. Yeah, and him and Tristica are both kind of on a maintenance program right now. But we need to keep them on the prayer list, and we need to keep them before the Lord always. Let's go to the Lord in prayer now for them. Only Father, we lift up these that we have mentioned, Lord, and others that have cancer and might need your, just your hand and your comfort, Lord. Lord, we know it's a terrible disease, and we know that you have a plan, and we give them to you, Lord, that your will would be done in their lives, Lord. Whether it be a miracle healing, we've seen that many, many times. But you know what they need, Lord, and we give them to you that your will would be done. We just love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, healing. Jim Miranda, Patsy Kelly, Elder Jim Schwem. Elder Jim Schwem, we just saw a miracle this week. In the last week, we really didn't think he'd make it through the night. Uh, about, five, about seven days ago, now he is home. And we want to keep him in our prayer list so he can come back. Walter, has anybody heard anything about Walter? I've heard nothing. We're going to have to call. Did you? How's he doing? Okay. Mark and Mary Ann, Sylvia, Cindy, Ann, Bob Bowater, Tony Marquez, Ezekiel, and uh, Briley. I got an update on Mark. Okay. Good. <laughs> That's but yeah. Yeah, and Marion got the, the ribs that keep popping out. She's doing therapy for that. That's awesome. Can you remind Ezekiel, I don't know how many of you remember him or not. He's a little two year old boy. We need to keep him on our prayer list. 
I'm not sure how long they, he'll live on life support, but he carries a backpack. I, I visited him a couple times, and he carries a backpack all day long, and he's got a tube in his side, a tube in his heart, and a tube someplace else that keeps him alive all day, and then they switch it at night to a thing in his crib. But he needs three transplants, and they all need to be done at once, and they all need to come from the same child. So that's a real hard one, but keep him in your, your prayers. And this is one where it, it really, I'm just praying for God's will because God knows what's going to happen. And he knows where the outcome is. And it's a blessing no matter what it is. God's in charge and we need to keep that. So let's lift them up. Oh, Heavenly Father, we lift all these up for healing, Lord, because you know where they need healed. Lord, will you know that it might be a miracle that you're going to do in their lives? that it might be just salvation if they don't know you and that you might take them home, Lord. But we give them to you and we ask that your will would be done because yours is the correct and the right healing. Lord, we can want a thousand things, but unless we ask in your will and in your name, we know it's all up to you and we know the outcome is just a blessing. So we give them to you, Lord, and we ask that you would heal them in the way that they need healed, whether it be a miracle or salvation or just to take them home to end the suffering, Lord. We give them to you, and we love and we praise you, and we humble ourselves before you as we lift these before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, how's Bonnie doing, Bob? Sorry to hear it, but... You're welcome. Bonnie was how old? 99 and, five months. 99 and five months. God took her home. Good. Jacqueline, unnamed family that needs God's intervention. The Vienne family, uh, little, little Bobby? Little, Bob little fine. Bob is fine. He was in the hospital. He was life flighted a week and a half ago. And... Uh, Actually, before, well, he was supposed to be life flighted. They didn't think he was going to make it. And just as the helicopter pulled in, everything changed, and he didn't have to be life flighted from the hospital he was in to another one. And he's doing real well. He, I believe he's home now, isn't he? he is. Yeah, he's home now. So that was a miracle we saw. And so don't be afraid to send these prayers to the prayer chain because God hears and answers prayers. We see it every week in this church. Let's lift him up now. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for little Bob and for Bonnie Bowater, Lord. Lord, sometimes it's just a blessing and, a, and just a, a miracle, Lord, even when you take us home. Lord, we thank you for the miracle with little Bob. We ask you to just comfort these that we have named. Lord, we just ask you to give them comfort and strength, Lord. Lord, we just give them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Jim and Jim for salvation, Tristica, Tennille and Steve, and all the others that don't know Christ. And we did have a, uh, an addition to the prayer list the other day. I'm not sure what's happening, but do you all remember Glenn Hunter, uh, Leah's husband? Yeah. He went into the hospital in Tucson uh, about four days ago with uh, double pneumonia and COVID, and they were flighting him out to a uh, hospital here in uh, Phoenix. And I haven't heard anything else, but he was doing really bad. They were going to put him on some kind of an antibiotic, but he was way beyond that even working. So we're not sure where that's headed, but just lift him up. He does know God, and he knows where he's going, but just lift him and the family up. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Well, Heavenly Father, we just lift these up before you. And Lord, we just ask you to be with them. Lord, whether it be a miracle and those that don't know you, Lord, oh my, we pray for them. We pray that you would just enter their lives. Let your spirit around them, Lord, and let them know that who you are and why it's so important to give their life to you and to accept the gift that your son paid for on the cross. Lord, we just can't overemphasize that with everybody we know that doesn't know you, Lord, how important it is to know you and know where 
eternity is and that you're going to be a part of it. And to be with the, the God of creation through eternity, Lord, that is such a privilege and an honor. And we couldn't do it without you. Lord, we lift up the elders of this church and all those that govern in, our, in this world, in our counties, our cities, our countries, Lord. We give them to you. We know you put them in office, Lord, and we're supposed to follow the laws. But, Lord, the way they're turning now, we ask for a worldwide revival. Lord, we know where the end is. We just ask you to intervene, and especially countries like ours that was founded on you, Lord. Let us go back to you, to worshiping you. Lord, we just love and praise you. Lord, we ask as we go through this service that you would just fill your, this place with your spirit. Touch each and every one of us. Lord, be with Mike as he preaches, Lord, and be the words that come out of his mouth that we might understand what you're teaching us this day. Lord, we just love and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Are there any others? Let's go to Lord and Song. We're going to go to number 65. page we're going to do number 68.
I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make the darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I Jeez, Lucy. No, I do, uh, whoa. Um, can you do me a favor? Can you turn down, the, um, what number am I? 55.1, uh, five just a little bit. Uh, <coughs> no, we do need to welcome uh, Ray and Debbie. Um, most of you know Ashley from the food bank. Welcome, Ashley. Um, which leads me into my next question. How many of you invited somebody to church this week? <laughs> Show of hands. I did. Okay, good, good. I want more hands, more hands. Um, no, it's it. I'm going to go over the challenges for a growing congregation. Um, we've been going, I, you guys, have you seen a theme over the last couple weeks? 
So our theme has been, uh, without telling you guys, our theme has been just the church. We're talking about the church. We're talking about growth. We're talking about, um, I try, try to ch- stray away from change, but we see the change that's going on around us, and we know that growth is coming if we do our due diligence. Growth as in not just the area, but growth as in the church. So um, as I noticed that, and Robin had brought forth, Robin and uh, Mary, Marianne had brought forth uh, as me- new members of the church, it inspired me to do uh, just a, essentially a series on, on church and church growth, church membership. So that's what led me to this, and uh, that's where we're at. So this is actually going to be the final one. I know, uh, see, <sighs> for those of you who weren't here last week, I am not allowed to say um, This. I can't say that. I'm not going to say it. I just drove it. (laughs) So that's where we are. All right. (laughs) Thanks, Lucy. You threw me off off, off track now. So as a congregation grows, it is likely to face various challenges. And these challenges we are going to see, especially as we grow. Um, We know that the the, the devil would certainly love to hinder us in our work and especially in our growth. How he does this may not always be evident because he is the great deceiver. So we need to be mindful of this. Through simple and seemingly harmless diversions, the devil can lead us astray and we must therefore take up the admonition to hold fast. Accept any challenges the devil might throw our way, knowing that our efforts to be steadfast are not for naught. Is that okay? Not for naught. <laughs> you started this. I wasn't even going to mess with you this week, Lucy. In this study, we were going to look at, at some of the challenges that, that any congregation must meet to serve the Lord faithfully. And the, what, the things that we're going to talk about today is that we need to remember what our work is. And I'm going to apologize for the slides. I got a new monitor at work, and it's really big. So when I built the slides at work, it looked okay. And then when I get it up here, it, that's, I don't think you guys can even read it in the back. I was looking back there. I'm, I'm blind as a bat without my glasses, and even with my glasses, I still couldn't see it. So I apologize, and I'll do better next week. So <laughs> we need to remember what our work is. We need to be above pettiness And we need to maintain gratitude for the blessings that God has given us. Before we go much further, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you fill this room with with your spirit, Lord. And Lord, let my words be your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we need to remember what our work is. To equip the saints for ministry, which is edification. We are to provide for the spiritual growth of each and every member of this church. Each and every person as visitors of this church, we are to provide spiritual growth for even you. You're not even members of our church yet, hopefully, you will will join us, but we need to be mindful of your spiritual growth and how we can help you grow in your spiritual growth. I want to read Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. I got too much stuff. And he gave some, some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the, of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of, of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love. We are to grow up in all aspects, aspects into him who is the head, even, even Christ, from who the whole body, being fit, 
fitted and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth, growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. We talked about this last week. We talked about the body, or at one of the weeks past, we talked about how we are all the body of Christ. Each one of us is a, is a part of the body, and with, it's really hard to walk when you don't have your legs. And it's really hard to help somebody when you need your hands. And if everybody's not working together, the body of Christ isn't working together. And as long as we are all working together for each other's spiritual growth, that's how the body of Christ grows. We can reflect on Paul's letter to the Hebrews in 10, chapter 10, verses 24 through 25. Okay, which way are we going? There we are. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. We are to provoke one another to love and good works. That is the very reason we are to assemble together. As I've said before, we don't just go to church because that's what we do. You, we, you come to the church. The church is your hardware store. And you come to the church to get the supplies and the need, what you need to go out and fulfill the Great Commission. Sitting in this church today no more makes you a car, that, uh, more, no more makes you a Christian than sitting in a, standing in a garage makes you a car. My question for you is, each one of you, doing what you can to help other Christians grow. I want you to reflect on that. I want you to think about that this week. Think about how you've helped just in the last week or how you could help in the next week another Christian grow in their faith. Remembering what our work is, the second, fourth, the gospel of Christ, to, or to sound forth the gospel of Christ, it's evangelism. Like the church in Thessalonica, through individual and collective efforts, we must sow the seed. As our building fills, it becomes te tempting to slack off. Remember, as we, we talked about the benefits of a small church and how some of us pull double, triple, and quadruple duty. But as we grow and we find more people to fill those slots, it, we, it becomes easier for us to kind of push off some of our obligations as there's more of a pool. But I want to remind you that you still have the same obligations. It's just it might not be in a capacity for the entire congregation. It may be me helping Lucy with a problem or Bill, Ashley going to, to Bill to, to talk to him about a problem rather than, or, or you don't even have to choose an elder. Maybe, maybe you go and, uh, Tim, you go and, and talk to John with a, with a problem that you have about something we've learned or something we talk, you know, whatever it is. Each one of us still has an obligation to, to one another. Just because in front of my name it says elder does not mean that you have to come to me. You can go to any one of the congregation. That's what we're here for. As the building fills, we either must expand said building or in Gail, like Gail and Bill, we were talking about uh, bees, they, they either expand their colony, or they swarm. That's not always bad. A swarm is not always bad. 
I want to remind you, you benefits of a small church, right? So if we grow to the point where maybe this land doesn't even, doesn't even provide us the space that we need, or we can't provide the individual attention that we need to for each one of you, then we swarm. We move, we start another church with the same basic principles that we have here, that, that we've got here at Mountain View. Some will have to leave to start another. This is the case where a church split isn't always bad. We talk about church split often. I wouldn't say often, not here at Mountain View, but I hear about it often. And it tends to happen in those medium to large churches because one side of the room isn't getting the proper attention from their pastors or elders, their deacons, or the church itself. It's not always a bad thing. Sometimes a split is part of that growth. What we're, our goal isn't just to grow the local church. That's not our goal. In fact, that's not our goal at all. Our goal is to grow the church universal, always. So keep that in mind. That's what evangelism is. It's not, I've said it before, it's not standing out there with a sign picketing at some rock concert. You, you, don't, you don't gather very many fish that way. You couldn't just stand at the lake with a sign saying, I'm here to fish, and expect the fish to just jump out of the water. It's not going to happen. Which is why I keep saying, how many people did you invite to church? Because if you're not saying it, we just put a sign out on the yard expecting them to come. We may remember that our work, what our work is in benevolence, Th which is, benevolence is the original purpose behind the collection or tithe. Even if there is no need here locally, there may be need elsewhere. Even if there isn't need right within our congregation and our benevolence fund definitely doesn't always go, and most often doesn't always go to the members of our church. My question, another reflection I want you to think about this week, is each one of us doing what we can to see that the, these needs are being met? With our food bank, I think we do a pretty good job. With our, with our outreach programs, I think we do a pretty good job, especially for such a small church. 972 families for a church with rostered membership of, is it 30? 39. Wow. 972 families with a church roster of 39. It's a pretty good outreach. Now, I'm not saying that, I'm not downplaying what our volunteers outside of the church do by any means. That's part of our mission so that is our pool, if you will, our way to reach people is by bringing volunteers and patrons of the food bank here to church with us, inviting them to come to church with us. I think this, I put this note in there, but I think it reigns pretty true with Mountain View Community Church after what we've all talked about just now. The work of our local church goes far beyond providing a place where people can simply worship from week to week. I think, I think we do a, a pretty good job of that. But we need to prepare ourselves to do that work. And that's where coming inside this building and getting those tools that you need for the week is important. My next question for you is, as the church grows, are you up for the challenge? Are you ready? Not just spiritually, but are you ready physically? It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of work. There's going to be, you know, we're, I'm hoping that we'll have to add a few chairs here pretty quick. Or maybe before the summer hits, we'll do services outside because we have so many. 
We, it was like 60 something was our capacity. 65. 65 is our capacity inside the church. At 39, we're getting pretty close. Although we do have our online service too, so. Um, our online outreach, by the way, just so I can update everybody, is pretty good. Um, where's that gentleman from that watches overseas, Gail? Ukraine. He's from the Ukraine. Yeah. Um, he was, he's from here locally, uh, but he, he lives in the Ukraine and he watches us almost each week. Um, I see him quite often online, so. Ah. <sighs> Live above pettiness. Yeah. We must live above pettiness. Even good churches can be hindered by pettiness. I want, to, want you to notice the, Paul's concern for the church in Philippi. Uh, let's go to Philippians 4, uh, 2 through 3. Okay, of course, they put some names in here that are going to be really hard for me to pronounce, and I apologize. I urge Yodia and I urge Sintich to live in harmony in the Lord. Indeed, true companion, I ask you also to help these women who have shared my struggle in the cause of the gospel, together with Clement, also the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. When churches lose sight of their primary purpose, they are ripe for being torn apart by selfishness, gossip, and factionalism. Uh, specifically, gossip. Gossip can tear a church apart. We want to keep a proper sense of proportion. It is disastrous if we begin to major in the minors, to blow problems way out of proportion. We must see the, the largeness and importance of our work in comparison to our own personal problems. And every church has its problems. So we talk about the church being, uh, especially the local church, being a family. Well, how many of you have brothers and sisters? Right? Growing up, how often did you fight with those brothers and sisters? Molly and Rory, I can tell you, every day. Me and my brothers, whew, knock out, knock down, drag out sometimes. My little, my little brother Alex and my little brother sister, I didn't think my little sister was going to make it, honestly. They're doing fine now. But, <laughs> but no, there's always going to be problems. The, the, the goal is to resolve those problems before they become a very large problem. And we go back to helping each other grow. If you're having an argument between two members, don't be afraid to ask someone who's not going to join in the gossip, hopefully, to help step in and mediate that problem. Let's try, to, let's try to resolve it before it becomes a big problem. And this is especially important as we grow. So this is where a church split could happen that wouldn't be part of growth. And it's also a very big challenge as we grow. You're gonna get more opinions you're going to get more ideas on how, that how our church should grow. Be mindful and be open-minded to new ideas, to bringing in new programs, especially as we grow. I honestly, I, I'll be 100% I'll be honest with you. As, as the church grows and as we add more services or more um, different things. Like I think ne uh, here soon we're going to start um, some classes with a, a lawyer. Um, we did the financial <coughs> courses. And I'll be honest with you, as we add things, I kind of look at them and go, well, is that going to, is that going to fall on me? Is that going to fall on Bill? Like, how's that going to work? You know, um, is this person that's bringing in this going to fully take on that. 
Because once you add it, you can't just take it away. You got to go through the entire thing. So, I mean, you can remove a service, but if you're doing like a class or something, that class has got to go. You got to go keep going. So, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well, you know. Um, many times, and Jennifer and I were um, actually part of this, we have somebody new come in and say, hey, I want to start a Sunday school. That was the first week we were here, the first week we attended Mountain View Community Church. We wanted to start a Sunday school for kids. Um, I will revert back to what Dave told Jennifer and I is, hey, why don't you come back next week and we'll talk. <laughs> and we've had that before. We've had, you know, youth, people who wanted to come in and do like a, a, a youth ministry or something. Um, this was actually just a few months ago. Somebody had come in wanting to do a youth ministry. Really great. I think it'd be a really great service that we could offer. That, that would be awesome. Come back next week. They're not here. So something to think about. It would be a very sad thing to have this congregation or any congregation hindered by pettiness. And a lot of congregations do allow it to, to keep them from growing. I bring this up because I want, to, I want you to be aware of it. I want you to be aware of the challenge. Uh, pettiness is definitely something that the devil uses in churches uh, because it's very easy to do because of human nature. So think about this as we grow. Will we, as Mountain View Community Church, accept the challenge to never allow pettiness, pettiness to affect us? If we are aware of pettiness, it is much easier to meet that challenge. And at the same time, we meet another one. Gratitude for our blessings. I want you to note how often Paul exhorted the Colossians to be thankful. Um, I'm not going to read all of them. I have a summary of each one of them. Uh, but I did put the verses up here. If you would like them um, after church, get with me, and I'll, I'm more than happy to provide them for you since I messed up with the slides this week. Uh, Colossians 1.12, giving thanks to the Father. Colossians 2.7, abounding with thanksgiving. Colossians 3.15, as the peace of God rules in your heart, be thankful. Colossians 3.17, giving thanks to God. Colossians 4.2, be vigilant in prayer with thanksgiving. It is utmost importance to thank God first, always. What we do with the food bank, what we do here at the church is for God's glory and God's glory alone. It's not for Jim's glory. It's not for Alice's glory. It's not for Ashley's glory. It's not for John's glory. It is for God's glory. It is not for the glory of Maricopa Pantry. That was born out of a necessity. It is for God's glory. We pray before every food bank. And I will tell you that if you don't follow that timeline and promptly pray, there are going to be volunteers who are not even in this church right now that will call you out on it. It's happened to me. And sometimes people call you out for not welcoming new members before you even get to that point. So... <laughs> but it is important to be thankful for all the blessings that God has given us. Never, ever, 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 ever. Can I keep saying ever or should I stop? I see you getting perturbed. <laughs> be unthankful. It is a step toward depravity and it is a sign of very perilous times.
In conclusion, there are going to be many other challenges that this congregation will face as we grow. I'm sure I missed the majority of them. These were the highlights. Um, there's going to be persecution for the cause of Christ. We know that. We've seen that. Natural calamities. That not just devastate here at the church. You know, we could get a rogue tornado that never happens in the Phoenix Valley, but it could happen. We've seen it happen um, very close to home. But it wipes away our church, but also our community, too. Look at what happened to Hila Ben last year. You know, uh, just a few years ago, Jennifer and I were just moved into the house three days earlier, and we flooded. 30 years, some people have been out here and never seen that wash go that high. Things happen. There's going to be challenges. In most cases, even those challenges can be met and overcome if we remember what our work is, we live above pettiness, and we maintain gratitude for our blessings. With a, with a will to do what the Lord desires of us and with an attitude of gratitude, lifting us above any sense of pettiness that might drag us down, let us do our part to answer the prayer of Paul. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's Ephesians 3, 21. That's all I've got. Let's worship in song. We're going to finish with number 152.
Throughout this week, may you keep in mind the challenges that we talked about today so that we may grow this church and the universal church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, Jen, let's take, uh, let's take 15. Uh, for the folks that are online, we're going to take a 15-minute break and then uh, reconvene for our annual meeting. Um, if you are online, you can go ahead and comment now that you're there so that uh, we can get you on the roster as being a member, uh, being uh, present. Thank you.